Hello all, uh, Fernando and Lars have joined me today to talk about the influences that social media has had on astrology over the years and uh, it's going to be a very interesting and uh, a boundaryless topic which we have been discussing just before the session. So uh, thanks for joining Fernando and Lars, it's a pleasure to be having a discussion with you again. Thank you very thanks much for, for inviting us. me. Nice to see you, Lars. Nice to see you, Ashwin. Hi, guys. Okay, so um, astrology has evolved over years since uh, we don't know when it started, but still uh, now we are at 2018 and uh, various stages of the world's evolution has also seen the evolution of astrology, not just because of astrologers, but also because of the uh, travel and communication that astrologers have uh, had over the centuries uh, from one point to another point which means one place to another place over the years so before uh, 1500 BC or even uh, 3000 BC I was reading a astronomical uh, like text from uh, the Harappa and Mohenjo-daro civilization which is currently uh, today's Pakistan where uh, there were astronomical symbols uh, written on some uh, some uh, I for, I'm forgetting the name but uh, over a period of time things have been written and recorded in some way which is actually lost today but it must have been transmitted to the immediate generation and uh, so on and so forth so likewise uh, Babylonians initially used limestone to record everything not just astrology but they used limestones first to write which is what something I read uh, today and uh, things have passed on uh, from Babylonian to uh, Hellenistic tradition and Babylonians and Greeks and Indians have had long trade connections which also had so much of communication which also involved social media but social media of the antiquity so and uh, coming back from there uh, astrology has traveled from Hellenistic era to Persian era uh, from antiquity to the medieval period and then to renaissance and now the postmodern era so without social media uh, astrology would not be here today and uh, the ancient tradition of hellenistic astrology has also been recovered uh, only because of what has been written and saved uh, for long long centuries ago so but today uh, we also see that astrology has been um, uh, it has fallen prey to criticisms due to various reasons which also is because of social media so social media has had a lot of impact uh, in the evolution and also the criticism what astrology is facing today so that's that's our baseline and Fernando has written a brilliant article which uh, I've read and uh, uh, Lars has also read and he's also pretty impressed by how Fernando has shaped the article by raising various questions and answering himself in the middle and at the end like how it should be and how it should not be so uh, Fernando I think uh, you might set uh, your establishment on uh, uh, your article which you have written anyway it's going to be published in another 10 or 15 days but still I think uh, it will form a very good uh, opening platform to the discussion well the thing is uh, Ashwin that um you know, the internet, which came along uh, with a specific conjunction, more or less, uh, the, the development of the internet came with force during the early 1990s when Uranus and Neptune uh, were conjunct um, specifically uh, in, in Capricorn. And uh, that brought on a lot of uh, developments. On the, the internet already existed for, for a few decades before that, but it wasn't until the early 1990s, mid-1990s more or less, that the internet really came along. And I believe other astrologers have spoken about the rise of the internet in more depth astrologically, but the idea is that ever since then, which was a bit, at least 25 years ago, we've seen an exponential growth on how the internet has played an important part in astrology. Like uh, 20, 25, 30 years ago, people started getting into the internet, getting into uh, uh, the World Wide Web. And initially, and this is very interesting, a lot of people think that the internet from the beginning in, in the civil 
uh, and contrary to military uh, usage, uh, was used for information and so on. But initially, like, internet was used mainly for pornography and, believe it or not, <laughs> Star Trek. Did you know that? No. It was <laughs> pornography and Star Trek. Like, pornography and Star Trek were the main propulsors of the internet in the early 1990s. Specifically, huh. Specifically because porn has always been there and it's been the, a pillar of, of, of the internet development, specifically audiovisual technologies in the internet and Star Trek because TNG, the next generation, had started in 1987 and it was in its uh, sixth or seventh season uh, by 1993, okay? So uh, ever since then, people have been going to the internet to exchange information and, and it hasn't been until now that we've really seen the big potential of how this contributes to astrology. Like 30 years ago, yeah. people would go into the internet to exchange notes, to bash each other's uh, techniques and beliefs. <laughs> they would, uh, like they do today, they would come together and for the first time in a while, people from different parts of the world could come into communion and exchange things. Afterwards, uh, people started blogging, and uh, a few years ago, people started going to social media uh, through tweets, through videos, through posts, uh, to spread the gospel of astrology. And now we're here, 10 years after the boom of, of social uh, media, specifically YouTube and Facebook, and we're seeing how uh, social media has a, a intrinsically changed astrology forever. I mean, uh, in a way, uh, the internet did for astrology what sound did for film. And in a way, social media is doing for astrology what Star Wars did to the film industry. Uh, after Star Wars came out, uh, the way um, uh, movies were marketed, movies uh, were made, uh, or, or how movies made money was very different to the way before they, they, they made money before Star Wars. So in a way, oh, wow. social media is, yeah, I mean, the merchandising, the materials, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, contracts with fast food chains to do more merchandising, toys, oh, okay. for example, wow. sequels, uh, the, the whole experience of conventions and so on and so forth. And, and uh, now uh, with social media, uh, astrology is taking very big leaps. But in a way, when you study media ecology, uh, you realize that um, when new technologies come in, things change. And this is what we've been experiencing, in my opinion, for the past 25, 30 years, how the internet is bringing astrology to a new threshold, but in a way, we're, we're, we're losing, losing uh, things from the past. To quote uh, a scholar I like very much called Neil Postman from NYU, he, he used to say that when new technologies come in, uh, human beings uh, participate in a sort of Faustian exchange, right? New technologies come in to help us, but in the process, we lose something in that exchange. For example, when the printing press came in, like we had books, we had a lot of capability to print a lot of information, but we lost our ability to memorize, which was very traditional in Indian culture and which was very traditional in a way in the West until the books came in. We also lost the tradition of scribes. And now with the internet and astrology, we are starting to see this happening for the first time in history. Uh, I believe so in recorded history. I don't know if in Atlantean times we had something like the internet, but sure. in recorded history, which is probably, which is probable. But the thing is like right now for the first time in history, I mean, I am in Puerto Rico. Um, Lars is in New Mexico. And you are in, in Tamil Nadu, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right, Ashwin? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're in three different points in the world. And we are communicated basically by very little money. I mean, I just paid my internet connection. You pay yours, you pay yours, you pay your software, whatever. But for the first time in history, astrologers from all over the world are coming together and bringing together the different traditions of the world. And I mean, we are pioneers in many ways that the astrology is helping us to construct or reconstruct, for that matter, a world uh, astrological tradition because there's no such thing as different astrological traditions. I mean, there's only one astrological tradition and now we are reconstructing it little by little, taking a little bit of yeah. Western astrology, taking a little bit of Vedic astrology, taking a little bit of Chinese, Tibetan, Mayan, and so on and so forth. But once again, there's a Faustian exchange. 
we have gained the accessibility of complete astrological knowledge, but at the same time, we have lost that sacrosanct sense of yeah. the art, right? And the science of astrology. We've lost the initiatic rites. We've, uh, the, the mystery schools have lost their monopoly on these topics as they have on other topics. The Mennerbund, which is a German term for basically like a cult or a sect, but basically it's the Mennerbund, Menner being a mena, being in German uh, men, and Bund being like a league, a league of men, which is a term uh, of, of the Bolian philosophy, which basically means the a group of men who take care of the principles that uh, determine a society or determine a set of beliefs. Uh, the Mennerbund have lost, like the, the, the initiatic schools have lost the control over uh, these uh, topics. Of course, some people would say that there's still hidden sides of astrology that we don't know and so on and so forth, but we don't know until they come out or at least until people from those leagues come to us and, and say, hey, you want to be a part of our group or whatever. But the point is that We've gained complete accessibility to this knowledge. We have gained complete accessibility to the writings of Hellenistic astrologers, to the writings of Vedic astrologers that have been translated and that, there are, that are being translated. But at yeah. the same time, we've lost those filters that have prevented yeah. centuries uh, people of uh, low reputation, people of questionable intents to gain accessibility to this knowledge, right? So in a way, uh, we are able now through social media, the internet, to have a great capacity to study and practice astrology. But at the same time, the Faustian exchange is that it's gonna be open to the mundane uh, people. Yeah. Like there's a saying that you shouldn't give pearls to pigs. Well, now with astrology and the internet, all the pigs have access to all the pearls as well as people like us, uh, people of good intent. I imagine people who wanna grow in the art and science of astrology have that uh, access. So in a way, uh, we've gained access, but we gotta start uh, realizing that we are no longer living in the days of old. The days of old of going to ashrams, of going to these menerbund, of these initiatic leagues are over because everything is accessible to us. Now, yeah. we run the danger of what I've just told you about the uh, mundanization of the art and science. We also run the danger of um, the vulgarization uh, of the art, uh, uh, but in a way we've gained accessibility. And that's something we have to deal with it today, of not becoming so fanatic, so proselytist, uh, mm. like some people do in some religious groups that have not realized this yet, or to some oh, people yeah. in some political groups, like that Sagittarius, that sattvic essence of, of my philosophy, my religion, and that's why it's the best, and that's why I'm gonna uh, go to the other side of the Mediterranean and start a crusade, that's why I'm going and, and fight the Protestants, that's why I'm gonna fight the, the, the Hindus in India because they're not Muslim, that, and so on and so forth. It's that we have to realize that, okay, we gotta sit down and, and realize that we are living through a, an astrological renaissance. And that's the main idea here. But this wow. renaissance, it's not gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be so happy. No, we're gonna have to live with the reality of the modern world side by side. We're gonna have to live with the reality that astrology is gonna be living side by side with pornography, that it's gonna be living side by side with, with things of popular culture like Kanye West, at the, like uh, uh, the Kardashians and so on and so forth. Who knows what comes after that? But, but we gotta yeah. stop stop being so uh, purists in many ways. I mean, not in the practice, but like more in the idiosyncrasy of, you know, you shouldn't do that because this and that. No, man. I mean, we got to live with the times and it's not yeah. the protocol. It's not the etiquette. It's more the essence and the intent that matters uh, with the things that are going on. And I know, I know this is a very convoluted subject and I'm, saying a lot of things, but uh, I, I guess I'm transmitting the idea that we are living through a new age of astrology and it's starting right now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, I think that should be uh, uploaded to the History Channel. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, All right, bye. I think that wraps it up, guys. Uh, yeah, okay, bye. See you next time. <laughs> okay, no, but, but I mean, it's the tip. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the iceberg. You know what I mean? That was a brilliant establishment to the show. But uh, as Lars said, I think that that is also good to wrap up actually. But still. Uh, as no, much I'm as, just uh, kidding. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but, but did, did you did you understand what I what I said, right? Or yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's pretty much the point. Uh, but the uh, the thing here is that uh, uh, Fernando says that astrology is uh, in a re refreshing renaissance again, and uh, social media is actually bringing up the things. But still. Uh, as much as we all say that astrology is universal and there are so many astrologers saying that astrology is universal, which is also a bigger part of social media, we also have the other side, which uh, which is the, uh, which we have the other debates that are going on that, which is between the skeptics and the astrologers, the science people and the astrologers who keep arguing that uh, uh, astrologers try to prove astrology as a scientific phenomenon, whereas uh, science people uh, tend to say that astrology is still a pseudoscience and it is BS. But still, that is also a part of social media. And also, we have astrologers uh, having uh, heated arguments and getting personal with tropical and sidereal zodiac yeah. and, and uh, house systems. And wherever you go, it is very difficult to keep off the tropical sidereal zodiac debate and also the house systems debate. And that is also yeah. a part of that is also a part of social media. And let's make Lars the bad boy and ask him to talk about the negative shades what astrology is facing today. So, ha, ha, and uh, <laughs> 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 come on, Lars. All right. Yeah. Um, well, basically, uh, yeah. It, building off of this idea of the Faustine exchange, you know, like making a deal with the devil for something and losing something in return, and so on and so forth. There's uh, one of the big things I notice with um, astrology in the modern age, and especially with the advent of the internet, as and as you were saying, uh, is that there is um, most people mentally, and then this isn't to put people down and say they're stupid. It, that's not what I'm saying. But most people mentally cannot handle the abundance of information that they have the access over, to. The, the oversaturation. Yes. Oversaturation, overstimulating. And this is the case with astrological softwares as well. My, uh, my hard drive actually um, crashed and I lost all of my astrological software and data. And I haven't reinstalled it. For, for months because I, at first I was pissed, but then I realized it was a blessing because when I would use these softwares, I had access to so much info that my mind couldn't become clear enough to actually interpret the goddamn chart. You know, I'd be looking at, I'd be overthinking the Shadbala, the um, um, Ashtaka Varga, the, uh, you know, all these divisional charts. And then I'd be comparing it to like Hellenistic astrology and like how they do it. And then I'd be trying to look at all these, like I'd just be trying to look at like all this stuff, like, and it literally just became like this. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't see the damn forest through the trees or whatever. So, um, so this is, this is kind of a major issue that most, the, the mind can't, can only comprehend and utilize so much. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, what it's done is it's either made them very insulated and short-sighted, and and they will, and these are the people that will say that this is this is the astrology that I practice, and this is what it's called, and these are its borders, right? And it, it doesn't go up here, it doesn't do that, it just stays here, and please don't do X, Y, and Z. And I'll give some examples of this because I've experienced a lot of this from people. Um, so they'll say, you know, I only practice. Vedic astrology and by Vedic astrology they mean like strictly what's in Parashara or something or strictly uh, there aren't too many like pure Jaimini people but like you know strictly uh, from this guru or this perspective or whatever and I don't deviate outside of that and I only use this Ayanamsha and I've only used this house system I've never experimented with other house systems because because this is my system and You'll see people in Hellenistic astrology doing the same thing. I wrote an article on the seven hermetic lots for um, for a, an online publication, and one of the things the editors told me 
Um, and, and, you know, some of them are my friends and stuff and I respect them, but some of the, one of the things they told me is uh, I mentioned the word K2 or Rahu in reference to the node, you know, in parentheses. And it was like, Oh, Lars, like, I don't think you should be mixing Hellenistic doctrine with, um, Indian doctrine. And I, to me, they're, to me, they're just, they're two sides of the same coin. So like if I'm, th and this is the thing is like, People have gotten attached to the, some sort of intellectual purity. And you were commenting on that too at, toward the end of what you were saying, like this weird sort of hyper purity of like, I just want to practice the Hellenistic system. Well, that's all well and good. But like for somebody like me who does a lot of Hellenistic techniques, but then does some, some Jyotish techniques and thinks about the nodes as Rahu and Ketu, I can't divorce those two. You know, like the nodes are always Rahu and Ketu to me, no matter what system of astrology I'm using, because I know about that. It makes sense. And that's going to allow me to ultimately read a chart better. It's not, so it's not a question of ideological purity. It's, it should be a question of, can we read the chart and get the correct information? You know, it, forget about this ideological purity thing. It doesn't serve a reading. So you know, I, uh, I, I, I found that kind of annoying <laughs> myself. And when they had me submit a second draft, I actually inundated it with more Vedic references <laughs> just as a way to show like, Hey, these systems are really similar. They're sisters, you know, they're brothers, whatever. Um, and that goes back to this idea that there really is just one system of astrology with you know different sets of techniques or ways of approaching it and so we don't need to be so insulated especially when we have all this information out there for the taking so that's one side of it that's one side of what happens to people who are being oversaturated mentally by this stuff the other side of it seems to be people who who want to now approach it extremely scientifically and by scientifically i mean modern science like scientific method and things like this and um you know i don't know why astrologers are so concerned with what the mainstream scientific community thinks of astrology and whether or not it's a science personally i don't really have much respect for the mainstream scientific community um you know, I respect individual scientists that are doing good work in their field. But when you have like people like Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson coming out and criticizing astrology, their criticisms are so utterly ignorant that I don't even take it seriously at this point because they're not being scientific in their critiques, you know? Exactly. I, I mean, if you look up in YouTube, Neil deGrasse Tyson or the other guy, I forgot his yeah. name. The scientist. Bill Nye. He who, yeah, who, who doesn't even, who only has a bachelor's, I believe, in, <laughs> in a, a business administration or something. And you look at their arguments against astrology. They're so weak and they're so misinformed. I don't want to say ignorant because I want to give the benefit of the doubt. But, uh, well, you know, I'm you over here doing this. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Astrologists, you, astrologists have always given the up, benefit of the doubt. If you look them up, it's very ignorant. I mean, their, their basic it's, argument it's is the procession of the equinoxes and how the constellations don't align with the tropical Rashi. Yeah, and it's not we, well informed. It's not well informed at all. And I completely agree with you, by the way. Yeah. So, um, so you know, uh, that's that's on a side note. We, we, as astrologers and stuff, we need to stop getting so upset by that. We, we should really just ignore it, honestly, because it, it really doesn't concern us. Um, and people who want astrology readings don't pay attention to that crap anyway. They really don't. Like, the only people that pay attention to that are the people that are looking for a way to demonize astrology because they already have made up their mind that it doesn't work or that it's phony and so on. Um, but uh, in any case, you have, so you have these astrologers that are, you know, whatever, they're, they're, they're very reductionistic, they're very linear, and they, they want to be accepted in mainstream science. So there's a particular, there's a particular school in, in India that heavily promotes this, and I'm not going to name any names, uh, <laughs> but you guys might be able to figure out who I'm talking about. But, but they, they promote this idea that, like, Brihat Parashara is, like, an extremely scientific... Uh, approach to astrology and they interpret like every sloka extremely myopically and linearly and like they derive these kind of absurd conclusions from 
with with the slokas and stuff. And then they you, they use something called circular logic, which is where you've you're proving something that you've already assumed is true, but you're not actually addressing the assumption of whether it's true or not, or the foundation of whether it's true or not. So you're already assuming, oh, this is perfect the way it is. Now I just have to understand it. And they come up with these weird interpretations that are, again, just very linear, like this sloka implies this, and that's all it implies. And that's how we're supposed to use that technique. So it's like, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to construct a one-to-one -one relationship with reality and astrological symbolism. But Anyone who knows what a symbol is will know that a symbol represents something real, but is itself not that thing. So with astrological symbolism, the traditional idea is that you are looking for confluence in charts. You are looking to see how several signatures come together to point to the same reality, which then becomes sort of a picture. And if you're, more intuitive, which is something that's also been looked down upon in the West these days for a variety of reasons. Again, it's more that scientific materialistic um, approach to astrology, but uh, then you can actually get like a full fledged picture or set of words that very accurately describes the reality. But whether it's based on one single thing or a few different things, you know, that that just depends on the moment and the astrologer. And so my, my point with this is that like this age of information that we live in where everything's so accessible is basically part of what's responsible for these two camps of like very like, no, this is how I do things. Like we don't use, um, we don't think about the North node this way. We think about it this way because it was in this book and this is the tradition we're doing uh, versus, you know, uh, okay, we're going to like statistically measure all this stuff and determine the viability of this technique based on how many charts it works on uh, across these demographics and stuff. And that both of those things totally cancel out the holistic and intuitive dimension of astrology and divination. So I think that from my perspective, that's like a real that's a real issue. Um, and it's, it's leading to a lot of divisiveness and division. And that's why you have these horrible arguments over which Ionamsha is correct and which house system is correct. And it's basically just turned into people like throw, throw, throwing poop at each other, like monkeys or something, you know, it's just, there's a lot of anger and judgment and emotionally charged exchanges happening. And it's very easy to do that over the internet because you're not, speaking and sitting with the person face to face you're just typing a comment and it, it's the same thing that happens in in traffic people are are behind this you know met metallic shield in their car and they're not treating each other as humans they're treating each other as drivers or other cars on the road you know and so it, it's it's on that level it can be dehumanizing and so when you're driving or when you're using social media you have to sort of be extra vigilant that you don't dehumanize yourself and others in the process. And, and let me add to that, to what Lars said, this oversaturation, this confusion, this idea that I'm right and you're wrong. Just imagine this is like little kids fighting yeah. in the classroom because there's no teacher. And this goes with what I said before, that the absence of these leagues, of these groups of men who uh, in a way inherit knowledge from past generations on and on were the groups that were responsible for choosing the people who would learn these things, who would teach these things to these people and in a way transmit uh, that teaching uh, yeah. that would meet those secrets of all agents ages organized in an organized way in order to prevent what is happening here the uh, the idea that astrology is open for everyone has created this as the same as the idea of drugs in many ways of hallucinogenics hallucinogenics and drugs were controlled by these groups uh, for ages and they were used in many ways for spiritual uh, uh, rituals for spiritual uh, uh, treatments and so on and so forth and for the first time in history not necessarily due to internet. This has to do more with the economic uh, order we live in. Yeah. Drugs are widespread. 
and they are uncontrolled, unfiltered, and that's why we have drug addiction. That's why we have people doing hallucinogenics at 13, 14, and they lose their minds. This is why we're having people smoking weed at 13, 12, and they drop out of school and they become uh, uh, rebellious without any cause. And the same way we can apply this to transcendental teachings, to occult teachings. I'm not saying that we need a manner wound. I'm not saying we need a right. regulatory uh, secret group. Uh, I do believe that we should have a regulatory astrological group, but you know that uh, an international oh, regulatory astrological group. The problem is <laughs> that, that if it's manned by astrologers, we're going to have a lot of problems. It should be a very yeah. interdisciplinary group, and it should be a very open-minded group of just postulating the idea that there's only one astrological tradition, and that we should, in a way, try to reconstruct that tradition from all the diverse international tradi uh, traditions we have today through the internet. And as, as he was saying, that they, there have been astrologers who have done this scientific research to prove that astrology is a serious science to empiricists and positivists in the established scientific community. And I can uh, think of the case of uh, Michel Gaukeling. I don't know if you know who that is. Gaukeling, yeah, yeah. Gaukeling effect. Gaukeling, and, effect. and he... Yeah, and, and he did some serious empirical research and came to the conclusion that some planets in the midheaven, ninth and seventh and tenth house, and some planets uh, are close to the twelfth and first house created certain uh, situations where people would become doctors or researchers, and uh, he went against skeptical groups and against scientific groups. And they would find any little thing to, to prove that he was wrong because, as Lars said, they didn't care about uh, realizing that astrology might be or might have some scientific, they just, scientific basis. They just yeah. wanted to prove them wrong, point on point. And, and I recently saw a, a podcast on this uh, a case, which was excellent. Uh, I, I want to, it's, it's uh, Chris Brennan's uh, podcast called The yeah. Astrology Podcast. And he touched yeah. upon this subject Gaukeling. of uh, Michel Gaukeli, yeah, which yeah. was amazing. I, mean, I, I didn't know the story by detail, but it could be a great documentary. But mm. in a way, uh, we all this convolution, that, that convoluted scenarios, the, these, the, these monkeys throwing shit at each other, as yeah. Lars said, which is a very good analogy of what's going on specifically in Facebook and YouTube, specifically with this whole idea on tropical zodiac, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's the idea of how social media has brought astrology to the front, but how we have to deal with the uh, realization that we have to mature, we have to adapt, we have to grow, and we have to realize that there's a lot of things that we have to digest to uh, avoid this oversaturation yeah. and avoid falling prey to these... Uh, primeval uh, human uh, impulses to fight over uh, things as astrology or as, as epistemological uh, uh, knowledge or wisdom yeah. in this. Okay. Thanks for yeah. bringing up the Michelle Gauklin uh, thing because uh, for, for some reason uh, I've been facing and I've been seeing a lot of attacks on astrology recently and uh, uh, I also saw a criticism uh, about uh, the Mars effect by Michel Gauklin and they, they said that the, uh, Michel Gauklin's experiment was totally a failure and it was proved by uh, some scientific community and uh, some scientists whose name I just don't want to take up here. But still, um, <clears throat> the I've also found or I've, I've had an opinion or an impression that the science people or the people of the scientific community have never used a testable sample that is actually efficient and effective enough to prove astrology as a pseudoscience because uh, even when you see an argument on any social platform like Facebook or whatever it may be, uh, when a science person actually attacks uh, or presents an attack on astrology, it is just because that they want to dump or uh, uh, they want to demean uh, astrology as a scientific phenomenon and there won't be an actual um, good statement or an establishment to prove that astrology is not a scientific phenomenon. And I've never seen any uh, uh, science person talk about 
precession of equinoxes and uh, precession of equinoxes was found uh, in early uh, 2nd century or 1st century BC and uh, that is one of those things that uh, scientific community forgets when they talk about astrology and when uh, and uh, that is one of those those things that we see on social media i just don't want to put yeah. so much of uh, yeah. emphasis on uh, the actual concepts of astrology but still we are talking about what social media can do to astrology so uh, moving along uh, and uh, going back to a little bit of history i think uh, like uh, relating to what fernando and lars said uh, astrology of the uh, ancient uh, era had a much more uh, clear vision and uh, a communication of what they wanted to uh, see i i kind of heard or saw somewhere that uh, people of the ancient era had a three dimensional effect of vision while we just have a two dimensional uh, vision uh, i don't know how far that is true but uh, to to see and to imagine that people were just uh, normal sky watchers and uh, they were able to calculate where uh, they were able to calculate a particular star and they were able to calculate the position of equinoxes and they were able to calculate everything all the astronomical calculations just by looking at the sky and uh, they were able to bring out the manifestations and the delineations and also the interpretations of a particular planetary placement in the uh, celestial zone um, th that has been uh, that has been one thing and uh, i i also read somewhere that uh, the second century astrology vedius valens had to travel from uh, travel a long way to alexandria to actually uh, uh, take up some of the concepts and construct the uh, construct some of the uh, major uh, uh, astrological and philosophical concepts of hellenistic tradition of astrology and i think lars knows it better but still uh, th th that was the uh, that was the interest and vigor that those people had when social media connection was very less and they were ready to move along and they were ready to bend their backs and try and learn things and then make a document and valence's document has proved to be one of the most important and the groundbreaking work of hellenistic tradition of astrology which we have today which forms a complete foundation of hellenistic astrology i don't know if Cla i think ptolemy sure. is also one of the greatest uh, astronomers and astrologers who who tried to prove astrology as a scientific phenomenon in the first or second century ad but still uh, valence's material has proved to be one of the uh, one of the most significant works of uh, Hellenistic tradition, which is also a part of social media, and that is not the dirt of social media. That is one of the yeah. uh, blessings that we have uh, because of social media and communication. So, uh, coming back to the other things, the magazines and newspapers. So, I think Sunshine Horoscope was uh, came into effect by 1920s or 1930s, if I'm not wrong, but uh, the newspaper horoscopes and the horoscope columns have given rise uh, i am not saying that horoscope columns or newspaper columns are bad or they uh, i am not saying that they project astrology in a wrong uh, dimension or something like that but still there are people or there are uh, there is a chance for skeptics to uh, to come to a conclusion that this is what astrology is all about so if you say that um, for taurus you have uh, Saturn and Capricorn at this point of time and you write a particular delineation for about one or two lines or two sentences that doesn't form the base of entire astrology and that is not what a Taurus native is actually going to face. So that that is just a, the general theme or a psychological mindset that a particular person is going to have which might or might not be true in uh, everyone's case. So in order to take everyone's case, I think you need to take uh, uh, birth chart of a particular person which is why we have natal astrology so yeah so th th this is again where i'm uh, i'm not uh, i'm not purposefully uh, doing it but still it brings me to that point where the astronomers and the scientific community have just taken the sign sun sign columns as a major uh, astrological work and they are trying to uh, say uh, say that astrology is not a uh, not an actual uh, interpretive or a predictive or a diagnostic tool. So, do you think um, this is the actual effect, or do you think newspaper horoscopes 
will actually i don't think newspaper horoscopes actually project people or uh, uh, actually project astrology in a wrong way i think that is that is one of the places where so many astrologers have started their careers and built up on that uh, which is actually a, a hope or a kindle to so many people in terms of their interest towards astrology so what's your take uh, i think let's start with lars okay um well huh. um i mean i guess for me it was kind of the opposite where i always thought astrology was bullshit because of things like newspaper horoscopes and i me only too. got it i only got into it when when some people at my school started to like talk about like the full chart and i i found that the heart professor there taught astrology and um this is a real this was a really intelligent accomplished individual so i respected her and so i gave it a chance and when she was able to actually tell me some like really legit information i was impressed and started actually studying it um so but that was just my journey i can't speak for other people i think um you know i there is a there is a fun and useful way to do newspaper horoscopes they're not all bad uh, i really like what what, what uh, rob bresney does for example he's a pretty popular astrologer in the us uh, and he writes um newspaper horoscopes i think for a few different newspapers perhaps but um okay i'm kind of getting off off track though like the the whole thing is that there's this idea that newspaper horoscopes led to like a dumbing down of astrology and that that sort of made astrology look really bad in the eyes of i don't know the scientific community and maybe the more materialistic minded people and i think there's a certain amount of truth to that but i think that there there have always been groups over the millennia that have attacked astrology and astrologers for one reason or another you know like that whether it was like some church organization or or whatever um there were even people that um there were even scientifically minded people in the past in europe that attacked astrology and stuff so that's really nothing new um but i guess what i what i want to say as well with in relationship to this is like because we have a tendency to see these sun sign horoscopes as being really a, a blight on astrology and it prevents it from being taken more scientifically and seriously but I, again i want to bring back this this idea that astrology isn't really scientific in the way that modern science thinks about things and there is absolutely no problem with that statistical studies and date and the way scientists do things via the scientific method and all that that is not the highest measurement of whether or not something is true or valid or useful at all so i really think as a community or as astrologers whatever we need to we need to get our heads out of that mindset you know i don't know a ton about gokulan but like I, I i'm not i i respect what he did but to me that that's like that's like it's just not something that i would ever be interested in studying or doing or, or needing to do to prove to myself the validity of astrology if if i use astrology let's say i use horary to predict the to the minute the time i'm going to leave my shift at work which i which actually happened once um you know it worked and it worked that one time which is just as valid if it if it was working every single time or 80% of the times you know what i mean like in, an empirical has to do the real definition of the word has to do with your own experience of something your own like uh research into something it doesn't it doesn't imply like statistics and these sort of like logical boundaries that have to be met so i think we should let astrology and divinatory arts be what they're going to be and not get so concerned about if it's meeting some scientific standard because it it just won't work that way and it's just like herbology you cannot scientifically um and statistically study herbology because each and every case is different when you're assessing what herbs someone needs you 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 if you're a good herbalist you're going to not only combine the herbs with other herbs 
okay? But you're also going to um, tell the person like how many times they should take each herb and for how long and like you're gonna measure it based on what's uniquely going on with them as an individual psychologically and physiologically. That's not something you can statistically measure and manipulate. So um, newspaper horoscopes are, they're kind of like um, a double-edged sword, I guess is what I would say. Okay, so uh, you would, I think that was a fair argument because we don't, uh, we in the sense astrologers don't have any reason to actually prove astrology as a scientific phenomenon. And uh, it's better to leave astrology uh, as what it is. And uh, I've, I've, I've had this belief that, um, so um, astrology um, is not something that, uh, uh, I know I was, I, was, I was trying to say something, but uh, I'm unable to convey it. So let's just okay. leave to, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe let's just leave to Fernando's uh, opinion about what, yeah. what Lars said and uh, let's carry on with that. Newspaper yeah. yeah. I, I think he, he he nailed it with the double edged sword, and that's what horoscopes are. They they've been great for promoting astrology, but they've been really bad as an example of good astrology. Yeah, uh, and that's that's how it is. But to, to to take it from a bigger perspective, we have to realize, and I'm going to be quoting here uh, Marshall McLuhan, who was. Neil Postman's uh, um, uh, mentor. And this man was a Canadian uh, uh, academic who, who studied literature, but in, later in his career, he um, became a media scholar on how media affects human beings. He was actually in, in one of Woody, Woody Allen's movies uh, uh, when he's in a line and he brings over an academic and they start talking about what he oh. said, I don't know if you've seen that movie, uh, Annie Hall, uh, not nah, whatever. He's a, he's a very popular academic among uh, media scholars. And since I wanted to study that in, in university, I still have that in my mind. And the thing is that Marshall McLuhan said that once the printing press was invented uh, in the, if I'm not mistaken, 16th century, 1500s, I don't remember. Well, the point, the point is that the, the invention of the printing press revolutionized uh, humanity in many ways. And, and the printing press created uh, the, the modern man, more or less, the way modern man interacts with the world through books, through newspapers, through media. But it wasn't until the 20th century that this turned a shift and turned uh, the, the printing man into the electric man. And now we are in a way that um, the air of that electric media uh, 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 beginning by, by uh, getting the internet. And one of uh, Marshall McLuhan's uh, main ideas is that the media affects humanity. And it's not necessarily how uh, the message affects humanity, but how the medium that transmits that message affects humanity. It's not what I say, it's through what I say that message. I mean, it's not the message to its emission and its reception, the important aspect of how it affects humanity. It's more of the medium, uh, wow. the, the methodology, the way it is transmitted. I mean, it's not the same me reading a horoscope in a newspaper than going to YouTube and realizing why uh, uh, the sidereal so zodiac is different to the tropical zodiac and so on and so forth. You see, this is something that we have to understand to see the development of astrology in media since the 1930s when the first horoscope was printed in London to celebrate the birth of a British royal. I don't remember the name. I think she was a princess. But it's very interesting that the first horoscope was in honor of a royal. The sun is representative of royal. And at the same time, it was a princess, and Mercury is representative of princesses, and at the same time, both media and newspapers. So it's very funny that the first incident that promoted the horoscope was uh, uh, things that are associated to, to modern media horoscopes. And in a way, the problem with horoscopes is that they've been a double-edged sword, as I said before. 
Uh, they've been great in promoting uh, the gospel of, of us. I'm saying the gospel of astrology. That's not, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> translating things from Spanish to English that do not sound correct. What I mean is that, that, that they spread the message of astrology in a very yeah. positive way. Because we knew what Leo was, what uh, Aquarius was, because we saw it in the horoscope. But it did a really bad job of, of projecting what, astrology entailed right it said what astrology was but it was it didn't set what it entailed and for me horoscopes have always been very bad uh in that sense <laughs> because uh first of all they're done incorrectly probably they're, they, done, incorrectly, they, most they're of done by people who are do not take the time to do them correctly and most importantly for me i am uh, the type of astrologer that uh insists that planetary periods uh, proceed in importance transits, okay? Uh, although some transits can be very significant. Uh, yes, go Also, ahead. I just wanted to add, yeah, I read a, a thing about sometimes these newspaper horoscopes are done by people who aren't even astrologers, who just exactly. know enough uh, of the vernacular. Exactly. That is a news. I never knew that. Yeah, to exactly. bullshit their way through um, making up something, so... And then, you know, I don't know how it is in India. I, I doubt it's the same as in the West. But, you know, for example, here, I, I once, I remember once a, 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 an eclipse and I was reading the newspaper column on Horoscope and saying that the eclipse was a wonderful time because the male energy and the female energy come together and it's a very happy time. And, oh, and, my God. And, 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 you know, and, and it's like, man, no traditional astrological writing of any tradition says that it says completely the opposite it's the most yeah. horrible time to lose things the point is that uh in a sense horoscopes have been very bad for astrology through that printing uh stage of media that we lived through the early yeah. 20th century but now with the electric uh part of media where we have the accessibility of open source media through the internet this yeah. uh, phenomenon of the horoscope is almost dead. And that's what I write in my, in my little uh, piece for your magazine, at the Ashwin, that uh, although people still do horoscopes in YouTube, which I think are just ridiculous, uh, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. Actually, you know, I, I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, man. I watched one uh that was posted by you know somebody who's pretty popular so i'm not going to mention names but you they, get, no no say the names don't worry no, about no, it no no i i, I don't want to <laughs> i mean there's a part of me that really wants to like stir up shit but i don't i don't think yeah, it's I, uh, I don't think it's wise so anyway um but this person they um you know i watched the one for my rising sign and what they said about because there was like the eclipse was happening in the sixth house of the horoscope for that rising sign. And like Mars was there and blah, blah, blah. They were like talking about like health stuff and how you may want to like get your health, you know, get, get go see a doctor, or get some Check things up. checked out. Or It was very like fear invoking, you know, there was no reason to say that or to interpret it that way. There were so many other ways it could have been interpreted that would be more holistic, more open-ended, and not so pessimistic of like, oh, be scared because you might get sick. Because it's a Lushan, Wow, exactly. what the hell is that? You know, like, there are so many other things that could have happened in that, like, like you know, there were some of the planets there related to the 11th house of friends, for example. Like, why not mention something? Maybe it's your friend that's going to get have a, have a hard time, but why say sick? Why, why put this fear in people's minds of like, you should go to your doctor. I don't want to go to my, I don't like, I don't like Western medicine. I don't like doctors. I don't want to be in a hospital or a doc. Those places are not inviting, you know, it's just, it's fear. It's yeah. fear. So. Yeah. And, and, and the, the other thing, uh, horoscopes, modern newspaper horoscopes developed because people wanted to massify, uh, massify and, and uh, mass produce yeah. the magic astrology and 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 the same thing they did with a lot of other things with with medicines and with uh, all sorts of of commodities because they wanted to get that economic uh input that um to promote that consumerism uh, any way possible because if you write horoscopes people will buy newspapers and and in a way that's another aspect that is negative about newspapers horoscopes that they foment consumerism, they foment fanaticism. Yeah, they foment, that's a good point. 
this 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 upheaval of emotions when something bad bad is going to happen and something good is going to happen or yeah it's gonna is it going to happen you know and for people who are listening to the to the podcast i'm doing the quotation marks with my hands that's why that's why i really like uh rob bresney's horoscopes if you if you look him up because he the way he writes them is more like he's taking you through like a story and like giving you things to contemplate and to sort of like you know like to meditate on the and, power uh, of metaphor i guess yeah yeah i just really like it because he's not trying to like predict anything for you like good or bad or positive or negative he's just trying to like give you some some interesting things to contemplate and that can kind of like titulate your imagination and stuff okay the, i mean the, 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 i don't i don't want to sound anti-horse because i do believe in transits uh, specific, but specifically slow-moving transits, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, the nodes, and the trans-Saturnian planets. Yeah. But I mean, Those to do a things. horoscope every fucking day, it's just fucking. <laughs> it, it, it's like me going to a tarot reader every fucking day. To every day. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just and, and 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 you know, I, I'm I'm. This is not good for my practice because sometimes when people come a lot, a lot to me, I say, "Look, man, you gotta chill, and you gotta, you gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta be certain." And I've already told you things, so you gotta, you gotta deal with that. And that's the same thing that horoscope produce. They produce this dependence. And you know, I don't believe in in monthly horoscopes. I do believe in transits. But what happens with transits? Slow moving transits. They don't happen every so often. So you can't commercialize them in an effective manner. So you have to invent horoscopes. You have to invent Mercury retrograde because they create this uh, market. And that's how, why uh, the modern horoscope, newspaper horoscope and how astrology was commercialized during the 20th century was pernicious to many uh, to, to the uh, to the art and science of astrology, but now with the internet, with social media, that is changing, and that's changing <laughs> in, in a major way. Because although people still do horoscopes and YouTube videos, I think that's going to change with time. I think that for the first time in history, uh, open source media, the internet, social media, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, opens the doors for people, for normal people. To finally understand and see astrology as astrologers see astrology. I don't mean that everyone yeah. is going to see astrology like astrologers do, but for the first time and in a free way, that's that's the most important thing, uh, they have the ability to study and to uh, start their astrological journey. Because if you want to start ask, uh, to learn astrology, uh, you got to start there, right? There's going to come a, a moment after you... Uh, yeah. uh, begin this autodidactical journey that you're going to say, well, I need a teacher. And that's when you're going to be a more serious student of astrology. Uh, but uh, until then, for the first time, there, there exists the open source media, the availability, the free information to learn astrology. And that's what I, I really com- try to convey in my writing, that for the first time, we, we have the ability to let go of that old commercialized way the same way that we're being more independent in terms of self-publishing, in terms of doing our own audiovisual uh, uh, content through cameras and, and microphones, the same way uh, we can buy things from Amazon, from eBay, we have a choice. Yeah. And that's the same thing that's uh, being presented now with the study of astrology, the practice of astrology. And social media, uh, s- since it started uh, uh, strongly uh, 10 years ago, is presenting that and we in many ways are pioneers in this field of creating that material and how we are going to reform that transmission of let's say the sun in in leo instead of reading a a horoscope column this short by somebody who's probably not an astrologer you are going to be able to look up a tweet look up a video where people are going to explain to you using traditional a traditional um uh uh, writings what it means of course this has to live side by side with the things i said before because the same way you're gonna see that you're gonna see me saying that the king i mean the video is the king in the in his in his castle and and he's in a good dignity and whatever and so on you're gonna see the loony 
who's going to go and, oh, the son in Leo, this is a very happy king. Uh, it, you can become melancholy and it's good for food and, you know, invent any, I'm just. Yeah, man, I, I, I got to I gotta yeah, jump yeah, in if that's okay. Yeah, like it's it's that thing where, and and this like popped into my mind when you were when you were first starting this segment of of what you're talking about, like where another thing the sun sign horoscopes have done and that the internet has now magnified is giving people enough knowledge, just enough to be dangerous, kind of deal. So like a common thing with Leo is or any of the signs, people will talk about the signs and teach about the signs based on their own prejudice in experiencing people in their life of those sun signs. So if you really don't like Leo, when you talk about Leo, oh, and Leos are like this, and they're really just like, you know, and, and then, then there's like a couple of good things thrown in. There's really no, there's no contextualization of it. Um, the only, the, the best and only book I've, I've ever read on the, the Zodiac is, uh, that explains it very, very holistically is Dane Rudyard's The Pulse of Life. And if you read that, you understand why each sign really means what it means. Granted, from a tropical perspective, but it puts things in context so that you don't have to rely on these stupid ideas like, oh, Leo, those people are like lions. I've heard people say that. Like, I've heard astrology that doesn't mean anything. That does not mean anything, at least not to me. Um, and I don't think it means anything to a lot of people, really. It's kind of just a, a, a conceptual idea that makes it easy to kind of bullshit your way through this stuff. But in any case, what all of this has also done is it's made it so that people are now, again, a little bit of knowledge kind of make you dangerous. So most astrologers even will do this. They will talk to their clients too much in terms of the astrological symbolism. And I've been guilty of it myself. Um, you know, it's not, it's not horrible. It's not something we have to entirely avoid, but in the ancient past, nobody, nobody. And actually it's still, it's still like this in my experience, um, with a lot of the Indians that have come to me for consultations, uh, but you know, maybe you have a different experience, Ashwin, I don't know, but they come and they want to know practical things. They want to know about like their when children. When I'm going to get a job, parents. when I'm going to get divorced. Yeah, when I'm gonna they get don't care about the fact that their son is in Leo in the 10th, 12th, third house. They don't care about, oh, well, well, what about the fact that I'm Virgo rising or Libra rising? They don't care. But in the West, uh, and it's spreading all over the world now. People are obsessed with these little tidbits of information. Like, what does my Venus in, in Virgo mean in the second house? And well, what is the fact that I have Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra on the <laughs> midheaven? And, and like, what, you know, they want to know all these tidbits of information. That's just raw information. That's not astrological interpretation. And so in the past, people didn't think about these things. Like, you wouldn't go... You know, like uh, Guido Bonatti, who, who was a 13th century um, astrologer in Italy, uh, who was who was an astrologer to like, yeah, yeah, yeah he like, translated the, the Arab the Arab writings. Yeah, right? like he he was a uh, he was like, you know, he was advising like um, like kings and and nobles and magistrates and all these kinds of people with astrology. You know, he's not sitting there telling them, well, you you know, you've got. Uh, you got the moon in Pisces in the 12th, so you're like really imaginative and you get lost in your dreams and things like that. It's like, no, like here, man, like you're going to, like when you go to battle, you're going to get wounded in your left leg, but you're going to survive. A, a real hardcore stuff, you know, nothing about, oh, because the moon's here and this sign's here. Like the person doesn't need to know that for a real reading, you know. And Lars, that's the double edge that we're going to have to live with, yeah. with astrology and social media. And, and, and not only that, I mean, the, 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 this new media, this social media, creates the ability for new ways of explaining astrology. Just think about memes, for example. Just think about astrology memes yeah. and how they can convey astrology in a new way through a new a medium. Of course, sure. it's being... Uh, vulgarized it's being uh, its sacrosanct essence is being stripped away with a very oh. uh, mundane essence but in a way it's transmitting the message and that's yeah. the thing astrologers will have to live with from now on we're not be gonna, gonna be talking about 
you know, Shani Deva and how, you know, difficult it can be during Sadesati or whatever. We're going to see it through a meme. We're going to see... Well, okay, but you know, even there, though, there's, there's, a, there's a witty, intelligent way to do that. Oh, and definitely. There's, and there's but a stupid way from to the do first, it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of so course. I, I agree with you. The same yeah. way a, a good horoscope can be written by somebody yeah. who's a good astrologer. And, as and look, mentioned. just don't, don't get me wrong. Like, th th this no, is no, also... I'm not, a, a, I'm not getting or no, 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 you're not. You're not. Sorry. I just oh, mean, okay. like, the, the proverbial we. Like, people yeah, watch... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't get oh, me the, wrong. The like, rhetorical we. Yeah. There's a lot of good in the fact that people can now, like, learn a little bit about astrology, go get a reading, and then research it more. There, there's good there because, personally... If something is heavily related to Saturn or Rahu or like one of these intense planets, I do like to tell a person about what that is and maybe advise them of some sources they can go read up on it because sometimes contemplating that can help extremely. Um, my friend has been in like Rahu Dasha and he was telling me that he was having for a while now these like horrible, horrible, intense nightmares, like just horrific stuff, like very, very Rahu K2 stuff. Um, you know, like, like creatures, like, like insects, creatures like bursting forth from his arm and like devouring him and, and things like this. So we just like, it wasn't a formal reading. We were just hanging out, but I ended up talking to him a lot about Rahu and K2 and like what they represent. And, and then I, I saw him like a, several months later and he was like, yeah, those nightmares stopped because I was, after you talked to me about that, I just contemplated it more for myself and like got back into some like occult studies and um, it just cleared itself up like really quickly, you know? So that's like a good example of how certain people are, are going to go further if they can meditate on these things, you know? And rather than just knowing this cut and dry, well, this is what it is, like in the old days. So, yeah, so there's, there's a good side to it, too. I don't want to bash it completely. And, and, and I wanted to say that uh, right now, like astro YouTube astrologers, uh, astrologers on Twitter, in, uh, astrologers on Instagram, are uh, the heirs of something that's been going on since the early 20th century of how astrology was transmitted. Like in the, thir mm -hmm. like in the beginning of the, the 20th century, you got these theosophists and these psychologists who were rediscovering astrology and postulating in new ways and publishing books, right? Yeah. Uh, doing things through their interest groups. Then you get the newspaper horoscopes in the 30s and how it relates to media in many ways, publishing. Then you get, uh, uh, then in the 50s and 60s, you start getting these English publications more and more about Jyotish by Bibi Raman and then in the 70s. So how, how that transmission of uh, astrological information goes through a publishing. Then in the 60s, you get the counter-revolution, you get the hippies, you get in, in many ways uh, uh, Linda Goodman's Sun Signs, which was in a way very revolutionary mm -hmm. in, in the States. Uh, and, and you see this publishing going on. You, you then get Kane Rouse books, you know, publishing, uh, Mercury. Then you get the internet. You get people traveling from India to, to the U.S., you know, uh, Vedic astrology groups in the U.K., U.S. You start seeing the internet coming together. You start seeing uh, 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 American astrologers uh, coining the phrase Vedic astrology, which was by James Braha in the 80s with his books. Then you get the internet. And you start getting blogs, you start getting groups, then you start getting people uh, uh, doing blogs per se alone, getting their websites. Then you start yeah. seeing Facebook, you start seeing YouTube. I mean, it's all this same media evolution and how astrology has been carried through it and how it has grown in popularity, how it has grown in many ways. And, and that's basically the essence of this renaissance. And, and now... Yeah. I wouldn't say we're in the climax. We, I, I would say we are in the beginning of the climax in many ways because we're all coming together. We are all bringing our ideas, our knowledge, our things we've learned. And all, not only us, when we're young, I, we still have at least 45, 50 years of practice if we continue doing what we do. But all the astrologers, like uh, people who have already passed, like uh, Chakapani Ulal, 
or, or Naranda Nisai, or so people who were in, 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 the, in the West who practiced Vedic astrology, uh, yeah. given their information, although they didn't publish books necessarily, but they were engaged in, in interviews and transmitting information, and that's being transmitted now through social media. I mean, we are all uh, gaining that knowledge, and, and, and uh, we are heirs of that tradition of, of how astrology has been transmitted through media, of course, there's been a lot of crap. There's been a lot of crazy shit. There's, a lot of, there's been a lot of mediocre stuff. But at yeah. the same time, there's been some jewels, some very specific things, very good things that we've gained through other people, older people than us, that have been transmitted through media that otherwise wouldn't have been transmitted in other times unless they would have been transmitted through these leagues of men, this manner boom that I talked about before. Right. So, so it's all a, a, a chronology of how uh, media has changed the way men, uh, humans, uh, interact with each other through communication. And that takes uh, uh, me to the next thing that I want to talk about, which is Mercury and how important it is in the practice of modern astrology. Okay, that was quite enlightening. And I was sure that I was having my own backfired uh, by Fernando when I was talking about <laughs> horoscopes. So... <laughs> no, no, what, what were you thinking about? No, no, I was not thinking anything, but uh, I knew you were not a great fan of uh, horoscopes. But uh, uh, maybe what you said is uh, uh, right, and there is no. But I'm a great I... fan of slow moving transits. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, the, the, the thing already, is that you, you that's... can't, that you, can you, would you imagine that? I mean, that's the way horoscopes should be done. Yeah, you should that... be doing horoscopes with the movement of Saturn. Jupiter, the nodes, and the Transaturnian planets. Yeah. But do? Uranus moves through a sign every seven years. Going to publish a column every seven years. Uh, Saturn <laughs> is two point five years. Are going to publish a column. Jupiter moves every every year. I mean, it's not economically viable. That's why you create yeah. these illusions, astrological illusions of the horoscope of the of the uh, of, of of the Mercury retrograde. Which which I mean, I really don't like Mercury retrograde either because it's it's just so, it's overblown. It's overblown because they want to charge. They want to charge money. It's all an economic. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah. Scheme. You see, uh, it, I, I, Mercury is my freaking ascendant lord, and I've only ever experienced like a few minor things during Man. a couple Mercury met- retrogrades. Mercury. The vast majority, nothing weird. Mercury nothing. retrograde is going to affect you when you are going through a Mercury <laughs> or it's conjoined some bad planets or yeah. going through a difficult point in your chart, but. Otherwise, it's just going to be minor stuff, minor. Yeah. And that's the, my thing with horoscope. They're minor things. You're looking at things too closely. You got to go back and you go yeah. back to the slow moving transits. For example, I'm going to make videos about Jupiter transit into a tropical uh, Sagittarius now and the migration of the nodes towards uh, Capricorn and Cancer tropically. Because sure. those are important transits. Those are transits that are going to affect us for a year and a year and a half. And and right. that's like the, the 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 arms of the clock. That's that's really important. Like the minutes and the yeah. hours are more important. It's not the second that. hand. Exactly. Everybody's focused on that damn second and hand. And the seconds, <laughs> man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I mean, this. yeah. Go on, go on. Through, through social media, we have the opportunity to change that. Uh, but I mean, it, it's it's probably not going to be that popular. But I mean, it, it's it's something that we can, uh, uh, you know, put our minds to in many ways. Yeah, as yeah. Uh, as Fernando said, I think it's more of uh, 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 publicity or something like that when you when you keep writing about. Even I'm not a huge fan of daily horoscopes, or even I never read uh, daily, uh, monthly, or weekly horoscope. Uh, myself, even before uh, I entered into astrology, but still, I uh, I just initiated writing the daily theme of the day, connecting the significance of nakshatra on that particular day, uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, other basic things, trying to link um, Vedic and uh, the Western concepts. But still, uh, I don't write the uh, twelve. Uh, the, the delineations for 12 signs or something like that, that's not something that I would like to do without having the uh, natal chart into consideration. Uh, that's 
but that's what i'm doing is entirely different and it's not horoscope but still coming to horoscopes the if if i want to pick out one positive or if i want to argue uh, for horoscopes i think that would be from the point of astrologer that uh, when you when you just go ahead and see the daily uh, movements of planets and if you have jupiter in scorpio and uh, moon in pisces you know uh, you, you will keep on writing what that particular jupiter in scorpio and moon in pisces will have as delineation so the particular aspect the trine aspect and you will be keeping on um, you will have to keep on writing so many things and you will have your own knowledge developed and uh, that is one of the uh, most positive aspects of horoscopes and uh, th that is also being used as as lars said it's a double edged sword and uh, uh, i think that's probably going to be the end and before that i just wanted to talk about the uh, magazines and other publications like wh whichever you, you found it to be very uh, uh, like long standing i think del horoscope has been since 1930s or early 1940s if i'm not wrong and there is the mountain astrologer and there is the astrological journal of uh, um, the british uh, astrological association so th there have been so many magazines that have been doing uh, a lot of uh, good work uh, for astrology and uh, there is also uh, the ascendant i think from uh, lars it's from aya association of uh, young yeah well, if i'm not wrong and there is iam infinity astrology uh, infinity astrology yeah, that's true. yeah so th there have been so many uh, good publications and in india there is the astrological magazine which is which was initially started by dr b v raman himself uh, and it is being run by his son uh, niranjan babu so th there are a lot of magazines that are doing good work so if you guys want to talk about some of those works if uh, from magazine point of view uh, if something is really good uh, for a student of astrology if, uh, for for an enthusiast if they want to go ahead and take or see about what would you like suggest or see about Well, obviously, here we're not talking about those publications specifically. Those are excellent publications, specifically yeah. the Jyotish ones you mentioned, uh, which are still in circulation, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. But uh, in many ways, we're talking. The, uh, you know, astrological publications, unfortunately, have always been brainy, have always been boring, and are not <laughs> commercialized because of that. Because that's knowledge for the hierophants, which we are yeah. the, the, the practitioners. We're talking about the things that you give to the masses, to the plebeians, right? And and I mean the horoscope, the modern newspaper horoscope, unfortunately, is a very mediocre way of transmitting the message of astrology. No, let's let's. And now, let's no, that's not what I, I'm just asking. Like, what is that something that we can advise to the enthusiasts uh, in terms of uh, learning or trying to get a hold? Uh, or grasp of astrological concepts so we we know that uh, newspapers are certainly not putting uh, astrology in a brighter light but still uh, to in order to get the concepts without an actual book or uh, in addition to an actual book what is that we are going to give uh, to the astrology enthusiasts and i'm going to say it right now without a doubt the best astrological publication in the internet is celestial vibes <laughs> published by Ashwin Balaji Subramanian so yeah that's what i can say that's the only thing i'm going to say okay thank you good stuff okay. yeah okay so okay and uh, uh, i think fernando's youtube channel uh, as a part of social media is one of the most uh, like good ambassadors of uh, vedic astrology or actual astrology in latin america and uh, lars's website has some interesting insights as well so uh, i think we are also part of uh, social media uh, as astrologers and we are also part of i won't say we are part of history but once history once today is done i think it is history so uh, fortunately or unfortunately we are also part of history and our websites and our writings are also part of uh, his, uh, historical works so uh, sure. uh, as it is we are going to continue giving our own um, um, astrological uh, writings and opinions and uh, as it is i have been trying to 
I've been trying to break the barrier and uh, barrier in the sense like uh, I practice only Vedic or I practice only Western or something. That's not the case. What they're doing, I'm trying to bring about a bridge between uh, all forms of astrology across the world. And uh, the basic thing is just to eliminate the cosmological differences and bring about the um, uh, harmony amongst the astrologers and astrology so that we can reach the general public and uh, the common man in a much better way so that we keep the scientific community silent. <laughs> so I think that was a very good discussion and uh, I hope uh, uh, it's fairly a long one. I thought uh, initially I thought it would be around 45 to 60 minutes but I think it's close to 90 minutes uh, with uh, the outbreak of yeah. Fernando and uh, uh, the continuation of Lars in his own merry way has finally come to an end and uh, thanks for joining Fernando and Lars and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Take care.